Hey everybody, I'm Pastor Sean. I have the honor of bringing you today's word for the day. Today's Bible passage is 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 through 7. And this is what it says. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your own heart about how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. So generosity is a muscle that grows from our purposeful and cheerful giving. God desires each and every one of us to be faithful givers, and from the looks of this passage, being purposeful and cheerful, generous people is actually an amazing investment. Uh, but maybe it's not an investment in what we think it's supposed to be an investment in. We don't want to equate being generous with becoming rich. And I've heard that a lot. If you give well, God will give back to you tenfold. And to some degree, that's true, but God isn't calling you to be generous in order to get rich. Generosity isn't a good financial investment. In fact, it's typically going to stretch your wallet. And I get it, especially today. People cringe at the thought of their already stretched wallet stretching any further, especially in a time of recession. But the truth is, God still calls us to invest in things that matter. Generosity with our finances is a good, eternal, and spiritual investment. It's not comfortable to give generously. It's not easy. Paul says it takes planning and purpose and thought on your part. So don't give under pressure, or don't try to impress the people in your life with your giving. Instead, take time out of your day, pray about it, and plan out what you can give to make a kingdom impact. The question should be, how can I invest in the kingdom? And here's where I'm at. How weird would it be for me to say, don't give under pressure, and then for me to try to pressure you through a word for the day? That'd be weird. So instead, I want you to think of the benefit and the investment you'd be making. I want you to look at where generosity in the church can make a difference in the world. Take Calvary, for example. Because of your generous giving, we're a church body who gives back to our community with no strings attached. We care for the body of believers with no strings attached. Your generosity, your generosity sends students to camp to hear the gospel, to be loved on and cared for. Your generosity within this body of believers changes lives in the name of Christ. And if that doesn't put a smile on your face, if that doesn't motivate you to be more generous, then maybe the place you need to start is your relationship with Jesus. All joy, wisdom, direction, and yes, generosity comes from our relationship with him. And true giving that creates dividends has to start with our relationship with him. Regardless of where you're at with your generosity, with your faith or your finances, I hope you get a chance to flex your faithful giving and invest in spiritual and eternal things and see the dividends that can come from it. I hope you find encouragement in sitting down and being very purposeful with what you give. More importantly, I hope your relationship with Jesus is growing and strong because everything starts and ends with, with him, with Christ, including our generosity. So Calvary, have a blessed day and we'll see you later.